Okay. Yesterday we talked about the story of the picky eater. So we have two functions: going to a after-school snack. What's this? Two functions went to an after-school snack, and、uh, they're trying to figure out who is the picky eater. And then so you go with that domain. Today, I don't have a story, but it's、uh, it's a little bit different. So you're gonna see two functions together like this notation: f circle g of x.、Uh, that circle means of. So this is of. And basically, what you're gonna do is you're gonna change that to a parentheses. So it's f of g of x. F of g of x, meaning that g of x is now inside f. Okay, so this is how it's gonna work. If I put in x right now, whatever number I want, which function is it gonna go in first, g or f? Yes, very good. So let's say we have this function machine like last year in algebra two. If I put in x, it's going to give me g of x, because whatever x I put in, it goes into g first, right? Now that's gonna give me a number that is g of x. G of g of x is now gonna go into f. Does that make sense? Okay, so this g of x is now gonna go into f. So it's like a two-step drop. Okay, x goes into g, comes out with g of x. G of x goes into f, comes out with f of g of x. Does that make sense? Okay, so there's a two-direction drop, and now let's kind of think about what's going in and what's coming out. X goes in. What usually comes out? Instead of calling g of x, what's another name of saying g of x? Hmm. Sorry, my question is probably really bad.、Um, okay, x goes in. Usually, y comes out. Right. Now, y is gonna go in, and then another kind of y comes out. So basically, domain goes in. The range comes out. Now, the range is a range of g. The range of G becomes the domain of F. Yeah, the range of G is now the domain of F because it's going into F. What's going in is always domain, right? And then what comes out is the range of, uh, sorry, range of F. Okay, all right. So now, if we're trying to find domain of the composed function, so this kind of technique is called composed. Yesterday was called combined. Combined. Today is called composed. So if we have two functions f and g, and where the the domain of f intersects. The range of g. Okay, so that's exactly what I just explained. The domain of f intersects the range of g. So like somehow they're kind of overlapping ranges. Then we can do this function. So drop it in, drop it in, and then we can have numbers that come out. Or we can do it the other way. G of f of x. So if we did g of f of x. That means x is gonna go in. X is gonna go in to f first. It's gonna come out as f of x, which is gonna go into the next function, g. And then it's gonna come out as g of f of x. So when that happens, we're saying that the domain of G intersects the range of F. 
So the x values of g will kind of be the part of um, the y values of f, then we can do this function. OK. So let's try it. If f of x is e to the x, g of x is square root x. Find f of g of x and g of f of x. And then domain of each. Verify graphically. OK, let's do this first. OK, first change it so you don't get too scared about the notation. The next thing is whatever was g is now a domain that goes into f. So what we're going to do is whatever was g, g was this one, it goes in as a replacement for g. Does that make sense? Does this part make sense? OK. So I'm just doing a substitution. g is square root of x. g is square root of x. OK? Now, what do we do when we have an f of something? That something always replaces x, right? So this something goes into the x part of f. Yeah? Okay. So that is e to the square root x. OK? All right. So now we, uh, so compose function, you, you just do that. Now the, the harder part is checking domain. All right, this domain is a little bit different. So uh, let me ask you a question. So this is f of g of x, uh, f of g of x. So we're looking at this one. x goes into which function first? g of x. So because it goes into g of x first, it cannot break g first. Like you, you're dropping this thing into this function. It has to be something that G is going to accept and say, mm, OK, that's a good domain. I, I'm OK with that. It can't make G say, the G of X say, oh, that number doesn't work for me. OK, so what matters is G of X. Now, what's going to happen is it's going to create a Y value, and that Y value goes into F of X. That Y value, we don't really care. Because if it can go in, then the Y, num y value is always going to be OK. If it can come out, then it comes out, right? Now, what we're going to do is we're going to care about the final product as well, uh, f of g of x. Whatever makes the final one break is also going to be a problem. Yes? OK, all right. No. <laughs> Very confusing. All right, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to check the domain of the inside function, whatever that is. Because it cannot break your first function. Second, it ha you have to check the domain of the composed function, meaning after you put them together, it has to also work there. Usually, if it works in for the one inside, it should not break the one that's um, final. OK, so f of g of x, which function do I care? f or g? g, because it's inside. OK, so then we look at the domain of g of x. What is the domain of g of x? g of x is square root x. OK, greater than or equal to 0. OK, next, we look at the final function, the final function. The final function is e to the square root x. OK, so you start with g of x, which is only from 0 equal to 0 or above. So that's how you're going to you know, start. That's just this amount of numbers that works. Then you look at the final one, and you say, are there more numbers I have to take out? Are there more numbers that's going to break this, making this undefined? Well, you ask yourself again. Is there a denominator problem? No denominator. Is there a square root problem that's different from the first square root? No. So there's no more problems, and we just stick with the original domain. So this is the domain. All right, let's verify this algebra uh, graphically. So remember, anything you do algebraically should also verify on your graph, like they would all say the same thing. 
So what you're gonna do is you're gonna graph this one on your calculator and you're checking domain, meaning look at your graph and say what are all the x values that show up. Okay, if you graph this, you're gonna see, oops. You're gonna see, oh, this is a little strange. Something like this. Okay, the graph kind of looks something like that. So you can see the domain is zero and above, right? So everything you do should all match up. Okay, let's do it the other way. G of f of x. G of f of x. Okay, that means f of x goes in as the new x. What was f of x? f of x is e to the x. So it's going to be g of e to the x. Okay, so e to the x goes into f. I'm sorry, e to the x goes into g. So that's going to be square root of e to the x. If you were trying to find the domain of that, that would be pretty crazy, trying to think about what's going on. So you take the inside function, all right? The inside function cannot break first. So inside function is e to the x. What is the domain of e to the x? All real numbers. Yes, all real numbers. Okay, now we look at g of f of x. g of f of x is square root e to the x. So now that I put them to the two together, are there more numbers that's going to be excluded is the question. Okay, so Caleb already thought about it, but we need to all think about it. Okay, so let's think about it. Uh, what can I not have inside a square root? Negative. Negative. So the question is, is it possible for e to the x to become negative? e to the x is this one. Is it possible for e to the x to become negative? Uh, is it possible for e to the x as in the y values of e to the x? The y values of e to the x. Is it possible to be negative? No. So it's not possible for this number to become negative. Right? So then the domain is the same. Are you guys with me? Because this is, this is pretty difficult. <laughs> okay. All right. So when you put two functions together, the first thing you care about is the inside function. The inside function has to work, right? If it doesn't work, then you have no function. So yes, no? Yeah. Okay, you, you're, you're dropping something into this function. It has to make this function work, like it's not gonna break it, so then you look at all the numbers that can go in. All right, all the numbers that go in will become y's when it comes out. That y's become the new x that goes into the next one. Right? So then, first you look at, oh, okay, what's gonna make this first one break? Okay, the set of domain works. Okay, good. Now, you look at the final one, and then you say, were there more things I should have taken out but I forgot to? Usually, there is, nah. Okay, hmm, how should I do this? Uh, it's the second part you guys don't understand, right? Yeah. Uh, Okay. Essentially, what you're looking at is like, are there any y values that's going to break this final one? What do you mean, like, break? Break as in it, it makes it not work. Yeah. Like. Okay, so for example, this one. Okay, the inside function is e to the x. Everything works, right? e to the x is all real numbers. What comes out is all positive numbers. Right, all positive numbers goes into square root x. Right, since it's all positive numbers going in, so it doesn't really matter. It's never, it was never gonna be negative. So we're looking for the second one, we're looking at the y value? Yes, of the original one. <laughs> essentially, essentially, if, if this is very confusing for you, all you have to care about is the inside function. 
because the compose function never, almost never breaks. Then what's the time when it breaks? Or like, what's the time when the, the first one and the second part is different? Mm, if the y value for some reason, if I put in all real numbers and then, because I said everything works, but then a part of it was negative, then the negative part can't go in. Like for example, um, which one has negative? This one, one over x. The domain of one over x is everything but zero. What comes out is positive and negative, right? So then if I put it into square root x, I'm gonna have some problems. Right, because these negative numbers are gonna make this undefined. So that essentially my only domain was this part. Uh, are you guys getting it? <laughs> um, okay, let's try that one again. That, yeah, that's a very difficult question. Okay, so let's say, uh, let's say the problem was, uh, okay. Hmm. Okay, f of x is 1 over x. g of x is square root x. Oh, this is very difficult. Okay, we're going to do g of f of x. Okay, there's a very difficult way of understanding it. Basically, you're just trying to really understand it. There's another way. I'm just telling you what to do. Just do it my way. You have no problems. So I'm just going to tell you the second way. If you have the time in a uh, like not fried brain, you can think about like why things work the way they do. Okay, so let's say for this example, which function do we care about? Yeah. F of x. What's the domain of f of x? Everything except zero. All right, let's put it into g of x. That's going to be square root of one over x. Yeah? Okay, simplify that. Are there numbers that won't work now? Okay, what numbers don't work? Negative numbers. You can see it, right? Okay, so now the domain is just zero to infinity. So you don't even have to care about this y going into here. That's essentially what's going on. But if you just follow this method, you'll get the domain. Are you guys with me? <laughs> First, you care about the inside. The inside domain has to work. Second, you care about what happens if you put them together. Are there more numbers that won't work? Uh, if there are, take them out, and then the leftover is your final domain. Okay? Okay, let's try some examples. Okay. Let's just do f of g of x. Okay, so you're going to check for the domain of g of x and then the domain after you put them together. So the domain of g of x, whatever that is, and then the domain after you put them together. So you start with g of x, whatever domain you have, you can only take them out, you cannot add them in. Okay, what's the domain of g of x? Okay, zero to infinity. Put them together, you get x minus one. What's the domain? No, still zero to infinity. You have to take the inside domain, whatever that was, you can only take more out from there, you cannot add more in. Because if all of a sudden I say all real numbers now, well, that would not pass through g. Right? All the negative numbers will have broke G and then no function. How do you go from x squared minus 1 to just x minus 1? Oh, okay. All right. So uh, G of x is square root x. So then that's going to be square root x squared minus 1 because f is x squared minus 1. x is my oh, okay, okay, square. Uh, yeah. Okay. Let's try another one. In, yeah, you have a question? No. Okay, um, g of f of x. Care about the inside, whatever that is. We can only take numbers out, we cannot add numbers in. Okay, which function do we care? 
Good. F of x. All right, f of x is um, x squared minus 1. So what's the domain? All real numbers. Good. All right, now we're going to put f into g. So square root of x squared minus 1. So now we have the now a new problem. This part has to be greater than or equal to 0. So what is the domain? Remember yesterday's notes, we solved something really similar. Pretty much exactly the same, I think. But anyways, um, this is a parabola that points up, and we have two roots. We're asking which part of this graph is above or equal to 0, this part and this part. So it's negative infinity to negative 1, and then 1 to infinity. Okay, so that is the final domain. <sighs> Okay. Yes, if you can. Yes. Like what? Like the second part. I just find the domain of that. Uh, usually yes, but you sometimes, if you get to the point where it looks like x minus one, you have you might be tempted to say all real numbers, but it's but not. This one is more like the, the picky ears, right? Don't you don't care about the picky ears. So basically, oh man. What should yeah, I say? This is, point, like, this is like your mom, the mom with the baby inside. Wow. <laughs> Whatever the mom eats, the baby eats, right? The baby's not going to eat an extra thing yeah. that the mom didn't eat. Uh -huh. Does that make sense? <laughs> so, whatever goes in has to go into the other one. <laughs> I don't know how else to describe this. The second question doesn't look like that now. The second question doesn't like the baby eat what? No, the it's mom. like the mom only <laughs> ate meat and then you said that the the, the 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 baby now ate some veggies. So I'm like, no, it cannot happen. Okay, so the mom ate everything. Mm -hmm. Now the baby, for some reason, has a um, digestive issue, and it did <laughs> not absorb some of the nutrients. Okay. <laughs> but it cannot eat more than what the mom ate. Is the thing. Okay. Sorry, these analogies are very. Horrendous, but uh, I don't know how else to explain this. But anyways, you care only about what's inside and then what actually happens at the very so end. So then why do you find the first one if you don't care about the first one? You, you, you do. Oh, man. Okay. Okay, well, we get to this today. Okay, let's do this one first. This one's not hard. Are you sure? I think it's not hard. <laughs> okay, so... We are going to now pull them apart. So there is a function, and then we're going to pull them in apart into two functions. So let's say that you have a function at h of x, and h of x is um, written so that g is inside f. You have to tell me which part is g, which part is f. Okay, it's not hard. So for example, if you look at this, the first thing is you just want to identify a pattern. Is there like a pattern going on? Sure. X, plus <laughs> huh? X plus one. So what we can do is put a box around it. And then you can kind of say that this is basically box squared minus three box plus four. Right? So the inside function, the one that's repeating is called the inside function. So we can say that's g of x is the box. And then f of x, which is the outside function, is like the skeleton equation. Does that make sense? Okay, so now we can just say g of x is x plus 1, and then f of x is just x squared minus 3x plus 4. I just pull them apart into two functions where one is inside the other. Okay, let's try another one, h of x. <clears throat> there are more than one ways. Sorry. Oh, that's okay. Okay, there's more than one way to decompose. Which one do you guys want to make the box? <laughs> Which one do you guys want to make the box? Hmm? X cubed? Okay, we can make x cubed the box. Or you can make x cubed plus 1 the box. It doesn't really matter. There's more than one way to do this. Okay, if you make x, uh, x cubed the box, then h of x is essentially square root of box plus 1. Okay, so then g of x is the inside function, which is the box, that's x cubed, 
f of x is the square root of box plus 1. So that is square root of x plus 1. Does that make sense? Okay, so it's not that hard. You just have to decide which part you're going to make as the inside function. Let's try the last one. Last one. Okay, try the last one first. Okay, you have to choose a part to make it into g of x. Okay. 